Hello, hello, hello. It's December 13th, 2022 in Big Bear, California. We are doing the snow aftermath video to see what the town looks like after the storm is completely gone. This is the aftermath and we're gonna be doing the whole entire valley. So you're gonna to get to see from one side of town where the Big Bear Dam is, where we hardly get, or where we get a lot more snow to Baldwin Lake where we don't get as much snow. And it's the same elevation. It's just uh, Baldwin Lake is, is sitting right near the desert on that side of the mountain range. And we have a lot of dry desert air that fights with this moisture that comes through and it, it, it usually wins out. So this, the beginning, and also for one of you who's wanted me to go up to Sugarloaf for the longest time, I'm headed up there for you guys. We're gonna do a, a quick run through about half of Sugarloaf. And then, uh, yeah, and then we're gonna head through Baldwin Lake, and then we're gonna go back to the dam, driving through Fawnskin, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> How the heck is everybody? Blessed as heck to have you here from wherever, you, wherever you're watching from. I love you guys, this is awesome. I'm very grateful to have you guys here. Can't believe so many people like to watch this channel. Like, it makes me feel really good. So thank you very much, and uh, um, yeah, I just, I'm just super, super grateful. I will, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this beautiful scenic video. I know the video on my face is not that beautiful, so we're gonna have to, uh, give you guys some good scenery here. So, the beginning of the ride, going to this side of town first, we're, um, there is typically less snow on this side of town. The further we go this direction and typically meaning every time. Not just mostly, it's every time. It's just gorgeous out here, guys, wow. Just gorgeous. It's nice to see that those mountains on this side, on that side over there actually have some decent snow on them. So yeah, our first stop is going to be the Sugarloaf region. Region. Yeah, this is so pretty out here. Oh man. So at my house, we ended up with, it had to be a little less than three inches. where we're going in Baldwin over here I am gonna say right now that you're gonna see so many dry patches that's how little snow they get it's the craziest thing you guys and we're gonna be taking main roads the whole time as I said it is Tuesday December 13th 2022 I always forget to show you guys snow play over here. Right next to Motel 6. Damn it, I missed it. It's a great place to take your kids sledding, you guys. Of course, it does cost money, but it is worth every penny. And then we're gonna be passing my really good friend Sahil his shop he owns two of them it's called big bear smoke and bait and he is just the nicest person you guys he is so nice i love sending people to his shop it's not just for like smoking thing like for uh nicotine and uh pipes and i guess bongs and stuff and it, it's not just all that type of stuff they've got local big bear trinkets and stuff there too um shirts and stuff like that and he is such a good guy. His family's been up here forever. And 
So I, I love giving him support. As I said, mainly because he's just a really good guy. And, and, and people who work as hard as he does, I think they, they deserve a lot more because they work their butts off. So I'll point out his one of his two shops up here. He's got Big Bear Smoke and Vape 1 and Big Bear Smoke and Vape 2. This is Big Bear Smoke and Vape 1. The second store is in Big Bear Lake. And we'll be eventually passing that when we get back, back around to the other side of town. This is going to be quite a drive, you guys. Quite a drive. And then... Another person I'd like to mention, another store owner up here. They own Queen Bee Honey Shop, and it moved into the village, like kind of next to Jack in the Box. And they sell everything that comes from a beehive, basically. From honey, honeycomb, candies with honey, cashews, chocolate, lollipops, cosmetics. They have skin balm with real pieces of lavender, stuff like that. They have everything there too. and. They're, 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 they're awesome, awesome, kind, kind people. And I vouch for them for sure. I would definitely check them out too. Queen Bee Honey Shop. Just the nicest, nicest, nicest people over there. Anyway, we're coming up to Big Bear Smoke and Vape on the left-hand side here. As I said, you guys, this guy has treated me so good and treated me like family since I've lived here that I always want to help him out. And they've got amazing products too, right here. It's like that whole downstairs for the most part. It's a huge store. He deserves so much love, you guys. And if you guys mentioned that I sent you, um, I'm sure he would probably offer you some sort of a discount. I haven't talked to him about that. All I told him was, dude, you are so darn cool. I'm, I'm gonna mention your shop in my, on my channel often because you're worth it. You're, you're a good father, you're a good husband. He just bought his wife like a, a beautiful brand new car, like just a cool dude. Takes care of his employees. I like the guy a lot. So yeah, those, those two. And then for like food, if you guys have a sweet tooth, my favorite place by far, especially if you have a little bit of a sweet tooth and also want a little bit of freshness at the same time is the Crepe Cafe. That's on Big Bear Boulevard, kind of near Big Bear Smoke and Vape too. It's right next to, uh, gosh, what is it right next to? I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> but it's called the Crepe Cafe. Phenomenal. Just phenomenal. But yeah, so we're almost to Sugarloaf. We're gonna be making a right-hand turn on a street called Maple in just a moment. In case you guys are wondering, it's 28 degrees, 10.56 a.m. We should be done with this drive by about 11.45. And it'll be uploaded probably just after two o'clock. So I know that's a late aftermath video. I apologize, I had to get some sleep, you guys. Since it wasn't snowing anymore, I figured it wouldn't be a big deal if I uh, slept in a little bit and took care of this. Now, if the temperatures were gonna be above freezing by this time and a lot of the snow melting, then I would have come out earlier. Obviously, we do have some snow melting right now, but that's from the radiational heating, from the sun's direct, direct light. So here we go, we're going up into Sugarloaf right now. This is called Maple Street. And as I said, we're just gonna do like half of Sugarloaf. Then we're gonna go down the back side of Sugarloaf to, to leave Sugarloaf, and then uh, that'll drop us off on Highway 38, which is one of the other main routes into Big Bear. This is super, super steep. I would not suggest it when there's ice and snow on it, especially going down definitely not suggest it <laughs> hey 
Hey baby, hope you're having a good day at work. Just wanted to let you know I'm out and about making the aftermath video. Got a couple calls also. I will call you shortly. Okay, so this is Sugarloaf. I mean, this is driving into Sugarloaf. <laughs> so we're gonna turn right here. This is Baldwin. And we're gonna take this all the way around. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Looks like they got the same amount of snow up here as we got. the high school right here. This is Big Bear High School. It's a, a pretty big, big property. Oh, it's so beautiful up here, guys. So beautiful. Got to be very careful coming up to this, coming up to this corner right here, because it is a sharp corner. You don't want to go off the edge here. I've seen cars that have uh, been down there. Not good. So yeah, sugar loaf. <laughs> and I said, we're, we're gonna take this until we get to, oh, what's the name of the street? forget the name of the street. Well, we're going to be coming up to it at the stop sign right here, so... Yeah, this is Sugarloaf. This is the, the neighborhood of Sugarloaf. And this street is Barton. That's right, Barton, B-A-R-T-O-N. So we are cruising on Barton. And we're gonna take this back to Maple and go down Maple, and then we're going down the down out of Sugarloaf, completely uh, down uh, Baldwin, so we don't have to deal with the slipperiness of uh, Maple. So we are on Maple Lane now. Give me a second, sorry about that, guys. All right, Maple. <laughs>
I can't look at it right now because I'm, I'm recording. Are you okay? I'm just leaving Sugarloaf right now, heading to Baldwin, and then I'm going to head over to the dam and then back home. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna turn right here at Baldwin. It's steep as well, but not nearly as steep there's a uh, Sugarloaf Park. They've got a skate park and baseball field and all that good stuff. But yeah, this is this is still steep, but it's as I, it's not nearly as steep as going up and down Maple. But you'll still see accidents here as well. so many miles on this vehicle doing these doing these drives but it's so nice driving this freaking vehicle it's so comfortable it really is such a comfortable ride Now we're at Highway 38, you guys. That's the way you leave town, coming this way. But we're not leaving town, we're heading back into town. And now we're gonna drive through Baldwin. So once we get to uh, the corner of 38 and Big Bear Boulevard, we're gonna turn right onto Shea Road and drive into the part of town that gets the least amount of snow. Instead of turning left to go into Big Bear Lake area, we're going to be turning right to be going into Baldwin. And here we go. out here I wish they got a lot more snow but it really is nice out here a lot of equestrian properties out here another problem with this area once we get deeper into it is there's they get so windy all the time it seems like lots of power outages out here just with wind And the big little flat area that you'll see when we have big snowstorms or heavy, heavy, heavy rains, it turns into a lake and it's 
it can be huge sometimes. Like almost the size of Big Bear Lake is how it feels. Big Bear Lake's not a big lake, but for something to just turn into a lake out of nowhere, uh, it's pretty significant. It's so gorgeous through here. There's a few little free sledding areas over here too, you guys. I'll show you one, uh, oh, well, there's one, one good one. There might not even be anybody here right now, so. Yeah, it is all the way on this side of town, but keep in mind, the two polar opposite ends of this town are, are only eight miles so it's 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 not it's not that far i'll show you in just a second where it is it's coming up here on the right hand side let me see we're getting close we're getting close here it is right here on the right hand side you just kind of pull off the road here and park right here and then look at you got all this free area to go sledding beautiful 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 i know free is good you guys so to get here just follow these directions just watch this video and fast forward to this point remember it's in the beginning parts of baldwin lake to mention this all the time um, right up here we're coming up to a spot where they filmed a Super Bowl commercial while I was living here can't remember what the commercial was about but I was so dumb I decided like on the next snow video I came and I reenacted the video <laughs> so it was it was right here someone was like stuck in the snow parked right here blah 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 can't remember the commercial but all the tv trucks were parked right here and and right here but yeah it was about someone being stuck in the snow and it looked really pretty it was really 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 pretty but yeah it was a super bowl commercial wow three crosses right there what happened holy moly that's really sad speed limit's only like 35 or 40 through here so to see three crosses in one place that's horrible my heart goes out to to your families, my goodness. Yeah, look at how beautiful the day is today. Hardly a cloud in the sky, just just these little tiny few few little gray guys right there. And that's it. But yeah, we're hitting less and less snow now, and it'll it'll get even a little bit less by the time we are at the end. So where this is gonna drop us off is on Highway 18 right before you would start heading down the mountain on the backside to Lucerne Valley and Apple Valley and stuff like that. So we're basically hitting all the roads for the entry and exit of this town. We hit Highway 38 for a second. We're gonna hit Highway 18 on the backside for a minute. And then we'll be hitting Highway 18 on the front side when we get to the dam. I'm telling you, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. chains or taking off their chains that makes
right in the middle of the road. Seriously, guys, that's the stuff that really, really pisses us off up here. Pull over. Don't just stop in the middle of, of the road like, like you own it. I'm not trying to be mean, but I mean, geez. That's what causes a lot of accidents up here. And a lot of people get really hurt like that, believe it or not. Because other cars who can't drive in the snow end up sliding into the back of cars like that. Obviously, we're not on the on like Big Bear Boulevard, but this is still a, a, a main thoroughfare in Big Bear. <laughs> so just be careful. Maybe like pull out a little bit. I'm like, yeah, there's just hardly any snow over here. They got about an inch over here. So I was expecting it to be even less over here, believe it or not. But you still see dry patches everywhere. Maybe not everywhere, but there's a lot of dry patches out here that I've been noticing with my eyes going back and forth. that view back there you can see the snow being made on bear mountain that is awesome i don't know if you guys can see from here but you can see a bunch of snow blowing up there still it's 28 degrees right now this is where we're at if you look at the at the map we're, we're just about no we're at the very very end of town right now All right, so we're coming off to Highway 18. We're gonna turn left instead of turn right. If we turn right, as I said, we start heading down to Lucerne Valley, down to the desert, the high desert, but we are not going that way. Yep, we would head up that way, and then right when you get around that corner to the left, you start heading down. So we are at the very end of town here as well. Now we can kind of speed up a little bit. Of course, you guys, just assume that it's constant ice when it's below freezing. It's not worth taking any risks. It's really not. You guys are very important, very valuable, super, super beautiful, kind, sold people. So just please take it as easy as you can always, but especially when it's under 32 degrees. just so beautiful so that whole flat area that's baldwin lake and as i said when we get big huge huge storms this will all turn into a lake this whole white area right here this flat area will will all turn into a lake for if it's a huge storm for a couple weeks and then all those homes in baldwin they become lakefront property and it's just it's i think it's even prettier over here when this is a lake than any part of town so pretty
So there's uh, Bear Mountain, the first cutout of the trees on the left, and then to the right, that's Snow Summit. Those are our two famous ski resorts. I'm sure all of you know, but this is where Sean White actually used to come up and, and, and snowboard all the time as a kid and learn how to do what he does today. This is Sean White's home. This is where he learned. And I think he's from like the San Diego area. And, and I, I saw or read an article about him. And uh, yeah, this is where he learned how to snowboard and spent all his time snowboarding as a youngster. That's kind of useless facts, but it's fun facts though, right? That's, that's pretty cool, right? And for those of you still with me right now, all the way through this long, dri long drive, can you believe I just passed 13,000 subscribers without asking people to subscribe? It blows my mind. I'm just really blown away with that. I'm very, very thankful to you guys that, that you guys like this channel that much. I love doing these videos for you guys. But I never, when I started this channel, I mean, a thousand subscribers seemed way, way out of line for me to even be thinking like that. Because I, I didn't start this channel to, to necessarily grow it. I started this channel because of my depression. And, and, and I moved up here to, just to be in the snow. That's it, nothing else. As I've, I've mentioned before, not the lake, not the mountains, not the people. Um, just for the snow and it was the closest place where it snows to where my family is so I moved up here super super depressed um, things were not going good for me at all I just wanted to die up here but I, I also wanted to record the snowstorms because it takes away a lot of my depression when I'm watching them and the problem was I couldn't afford not even a single thumb drive that would have been a huge waste of money for me because food was super important. So I decided that I would post them on YouTube because it's a free cloud for me to use. I don't have to pay any money to use it. And I made the videos public instead of keeping them private because I was thinking um, in a selfless way that if it helps me, Maybe I'm super rare, but if it helps me, maybe it, it'll, it'll help someone else to feel a little bit better, take them away from their, their everyday routine and just see it snow and feel like you're there while it's snowing. Because I, I hope it, it feels like you guys are, are here with me. But yeah, so uh, that's, that's what I did. I made the videos public. And uh, now eight, Eight years later, this is what happened. Just craziness. Eight years will be technically on May 1st. But this is the eighth winter season. And we're not even in winter time yet, guys. So, yeah, we, we did get another BS forecast. But I'm trying to stay positive and remind myself that it's definitely uh, not even winter time yet. That happens on the 21st to the 22nd of December. That's when winter solstice comes into play. So for you guys to know where we are at now, take a look at that little guy, that little arrow. That is where we are. We are on North Shore in Big Bear City. And we stay in Big Bear City until we get to Fawnskin. This side of the lake, there is no Big Bear Lake at all in terms of zip code. And we just passed an area where this Highway 18 just turned into Highway 38. It's really strange, you guys. It's really strange how they did, did these highways up here. It, it, it makes no sense. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Do 
Just beautiful. There's the ski resort. There's Bear Mountain right there. Guys, it is so lovely out here today. And the temperature is so nice. I like these colder temps. Of course, I'm inside the car, so I'm not I'm not going to be complaining about the temperature too much. Outside, if, if, if we were walking this, yeah, it's a little bit cold. But I like the cold temps because it keeps the snow around a little bit longer. A lot of you are coming up this, this next weekend, and I got to be honest with you, a, a lot of your questions were, is there, do you think there will still be snow by the time you guys get here this weekend? And I think pretty much all of this new snow is going to be gone. No joke. No joke. I don't like to joke about stuff like that. It's definitely no joke. I would never joke about the snow, guys. <laughs> but yeah, so you guys just heard how I started my channel. And uh, I'm someone who's had a lot of struggles. I know a lot of us do, but I've had a little more than most. I've been through nine different drug and alcohol rehab centers ever since I was 13 years old. Um, two sober living houses. So that's 11 total of these places. I spent a combined time of almost five years inside these places. I've never been to jail or, 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 or anything like that, thank goodness. Um, and I'm a really good person. I always have been. Like, I'm the type of person who, when I was in school, um, I was lucky enough to be part of the popular kids because I'm a, a very good athlete. And so I was uh, I'm always kind of on what, what they call the, the more popular side. But when some of the popular kids would, would be mean to other, other kids, I would... Like, uh, it, it would drive me to the point of tears a lot. Of course, not in front of anybody, but when I would go home, I would think about all the mean things that, that they're doing to these innocent kids. And uh, it, would, it would make me cry. Like, that's the type of person I am. I'm, I'm always looking out for other people. I wish I would have had the courage to speak up back then, but I didn't want to be treated like that. And so to stay part of the cool crowd, I had to keep my mouth shut, but it was horrible. It was horrible. All the so-called popular kids were such tools, just a bunch of punks, you know? And that's just, that's just not, not who I am. I feel for other people a lot, almost to a detriment that I care about others a lot more than I care about myself. Seeing other people hurt just, just crushes me like it just crushes me especially when it's pure innocence and they're getting taken advantage of and being called out for nothing and stuff like that it's I don't like that at all but yeah I spent all that time in those drug and alcohol rehabs the first place I got sent for like drug stuff I was 13 years old and when I say drugs, at for, for probably half of these places, it was for cannabis, you guys. It was for cannabis. But back then when I was young, like in 1993, it was still looked at as the worst thing ever, you know. I got kicked out of school when I went to University High School in Irvine because of it. Um, I got kicked out of six schools, not because I'm a bad person, I, I, I was disruptive. I would talk in class. I went to a lot, to, uh, to private schools for most of my early childhood in Newport Beach. And I didn't get kicked out of any of those schools. It's when I manipulated my parents into letting me leave the private school after fifth grade to go to a public school to start in, 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 in sixth grade. And what do you know? I started smoking pot in sixth grade. The first year out of the private school, I ended up getting kicked out of that school, um, and then it was just kicked out of school after school after school. Had some times when I wasn't so popular because I was I was switching from school school to school, where I was getting bullied because I had a really bad stuttering problem, 
and people would be so mean they would be so cruel and sometimes I would I would leave school because the harassment was so bad that they like wanted to beat me up for that stuff so I got really scared as a youngster and I would like ditch school terrified to ditch school to get in any trouble but not only did it get me in trouble it got me kicked out of schools um, yeah it's it's just been it's been it's been crazy for me as I got older that's when I became more of like a popular person in school but that's when I stuck around the schools as I got older hoping kids would change once I got into high school but no they didn't they're still a bunch of jerks um, I just feel so bad for the kids today who have to deal with internet and that type of bullying also It's just, it's, it, it's horrible, you guys. It's absolutely horrible. My mom always, always told me, kill them with kindness. Don't stoop down to their level. Kill them with kindness. But I have to be honest. Yeah, that's great advice, but when you're, young like that that doesn't help it just makes it worse and I had a mouth on me also so I would talk back to them all the time and uh, it just never ended up well for me such a bummer because I know the type of person I am and so to be treated like that was just horrible but you know, that's, that's, that's part of my life. That's part of what molded me into who I am today. I've never changed when it comes to loving other people and treating other people with as much love and respect as humanly possible because everyone deserves a chance in life. I'm the type who will give all my love and trust right when I first meet someone. And then if you break it once, then I'm, I'll wash my hands of you. But at the same time, if you are sincere in your apology, if you do want me to to be your acquaintance or friend still, then I believe in second chances. I mean, who wouldn't? We all make mistakes. We all say and do dumb things in life. None of us is perfect. God's the only perfect one. But yeah, I believe everyone deserves a chance and I believe in giving everyone the love and trust up front. And, and you know what? I suggest all of you try that. It's a lot easier living life like that. And just trying to find ways to connect with the people who are being cruel and being mean to try to help them, you know? Because unless you're a total sociopathic narcissist, then you're probably going to have feelings about how you've treated someone in, in, in a poor way. And those feelings are not good. You've got to love each other. You've got to treat each other with as much respect as possible. <clears throat> Life's hard enough as it is. And to have the useless bullying and stupid stuff like that happening, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's pointless. It's so hurtful. People take their lives, take their own lives because of it, guys. And we're in fawn skin now. If you guys want to see a cool horror movie called Jack Frost, it's actually horrible, but a lot of it was filmed right here, right in front of that building and right in front of these stores right here. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even know it, but around... Uh, Halloween, my 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 wife and I like to watch a lot of horror movies, and then so that was one that we ended up watching, and I totally recognized, uh, uh, like I didn't put two and two together right away, but I was like, gosh, that looks so familiar to me, and then it only took me a couple seconds, literally, to be like, oh my gosh, I know where that is, that's fawn skin, and it, yeah, and. I explained to her that it's that specific building and this and that. It, it, it's just so cool to see the area you live in on TV, especially when it's a surprise. 
when you're not expecting it, you know? The eagle habitat is right here. This is where the eagle cam is, up in there somewhere. This is a part of town where obviously if, if you don't trespass in any of those areas, this whole side over here, going back to where we just came from, um, once you're out of the Eagle habitat area, you could find some decent spots to sled over there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you I would never lie to you. I'm being honest with you. Never gonna lie to you. But yeah, so, I know I jump from story to story because I get so distracted. That's my ADD. But uh, regarding my all my stents and rehabs and stuff like that for uh, mainly cannabis and alcohol use, alcohol became a huge problem for me. Alcohol basically destroyed my family because of my drinking. But the last rehab I was at, I checked in. June 20, I think it was June 23rd, 2013. Actually, I don't think it was. It was 100% June 23rd, 2013. And I haven't had a drink since. That was the last rehab that I was at. It was called the Hills Treatment Center off of Laurel Canyon and Mulholland Drive. And that was the last time I ever had a drink. Actually, June 22nd was the last time I, I, I had a drink and I drove myself to this this rehab center on June 23rd, 2013. I can't believe I'm coming up on 10 years. It's just mind boggling to me. When I first started trying to get sober, going to AA meetings all the time, staying at sober living houses, doing 90 meetings in 90 days and um, becoming secretary of, of a meeting and then the coffee person and then this and that just taking all 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 these obligations to help me stay sober even 30 days seemed like forever to stay sober i mean forever and so i was so proud which everyone should be so proud to get your 30 day chip i have to say sadly this is the first time in my whole trying to get sober life that i haven't been to one aa meeting and i've stayed sober <laughs> I shouldn't say totally sober because I was smoking the green for a while, but I, but my, uh, my, my drug of choice is alcohol and I'm a really bad alcoholic. And the fact that I haven't had a drink in nine and a half years is just freaking crazy to me. I, I really can't believe it. but you, each and every single one of you is worth doing whatever it takes to get away from this stuff. It has nothing good for you. There's nothing good about drinking. There's nothing good about taking drugs. I mean, I see the point. The reason why I started really doing lots of it was because I, it was the best antidepressant for me because I didn't have to face my problems, but it's only a temporary solution for a long-term problem. Because as soon as you wake up hungover or whatever each day, it all starts all over again. The depression is back. You haven't done anything to deal with it. And then you just start drinking again. And it's just a vicious, vicious cycle. Ooh, look at that, Rocky. Hey there, Rocky. And if any of you ever need to to talk about anything like this because my experience has been rough but it's also there's a lot of hope in my experience of course I will always be there for you guys I will always be there for you guys I don't want you guys to suffer at all I did a lot of suffering so you guys wouldn't have to I know I've touched a lot of people's lives when it comes to drinking and drugging <clears throat> And I'd like to be as big of an impact on my friends and just anybody who needs the help as possible. I'm telling you, if I can do it, you guys, anybody can. I was what the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous <laughs> considers the hopeless variety. 
And when you learn more about the hopeless variety in, in, in the big book, you'll see that like I, I am as lucky as they come to still be sober today from my drug of choice. And you wanna know something even crazier? My whole life changed once I got sober. Yeah, it, for the first year and a half, it was it was it was rough because I had I had just completely destroyed my side of the street. It was horrible. But in in all that time, I ended up moving up here, not knowing what I was gonna do. Started this YouTube channel not expecting anything from it that was never the goal and then my my own business up here which is separate from the youtube channel i mean everything changed everything changed and it was so much good coming into my life because i wasn't drinking anymore so i'm super 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 happy and excited about that that i was strong enough to be able to stop and now my life has changed completely. I think I have a pretty good life. I got married. Obviously that was nine years into my sobriety, but I got married. Anyway, right, okay, sorry. So we just, we're driving over the Big Bear Dam right now. This is where you guys come into town from Highway 18 on the front side. So we're driving over the dam right now. And yeah, we're gonna see what the traffic's like coming into town. And this poor guy, look at that. That's not gonna be fun. <laughs> Jeez. That is not gonna be fun to dig yourself out of that. But you're not supposed to park there, so maybe lesson learned. But still, I feel so bad for that guy. Do you guys see how much snow he has to dig himself out of? Because the snow plow just like really blocked him in there. You guys wanna know something kinda cool? And it does happen. Let's say you're parked in a place where you're allowed to park and the snow plow accidentally hits you. If it's, even if it's hardly that much damage, I think they typically cut you a check for a brand new car. No joke, at least that's how it was when I lived in Denver. And I, and I went to boarding school slash rehab for two years in Denver, Colorado. Um, and then a year in Utah, like, all of this was when I was still a minor. But yeah, um, I, I remember spe uh, specifically in Colorado, if if Cal tra or Caltrans, there's, there's no Caltrans in Colorado, if the snow plows hit your vehicle, they buy you a brand new car. Pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. <laughs> so this is the part of town that gets the most snow, you guys. And you can see there's a lot more snow over here than there is where I live, or especially Baldwin. Just unbelievably beautiful, you guys. This is crazy beautiful. I love it so much. It makes me so happy to see all this snow over here. And seeing these roads still with, with ice and slush just stuck to the ground is so awesome. I haven't slipped once, you guys. I'm, I'm doing great. Usually I don't, believe it or not. I don't slip, so. But I'm so used to these driving conditions. Temperature's 28 degrees. This is where we're at now, the total opposite. If you can see the arrow, we're at the total opposite side of the lake now. But yeah, look at, look at, there's, there's a lot more snow over here, guys. I would say there's, looking at that roof, maybe four inches, maybe a little bit more on parts of the roof. It's amazing how this side of town gets so much more snow. I'm like right smack dab in the middle from the dam to the end of Baldwin. Smack dab in the middle. It's just, gosh, this is beautiful. Big Bear Lake city limit. I, I've been going slow now there's some cars behind me so I'm gonna speed up a little bit which I never suggest you guys do I'm doing this because I know how to drive in in these conditions no problem whenever you have someone back of you you guys I always suggest the first chance you get to pull over please please pull over and let them pass you 
because they're just going to make you more and more nervous. They're going to stay on your butt. It's not going to be fun. And it's not a race. It's it's not like down the hill where like everyone has to one up each other. You don't don't do that up here. You're going to cause yourselves a lot of unwanted torment and potential injury. Just let the, the, the people who are jerks pass you. And if you're the one being a jerk going super slow, yeah, just, it's really simple. Just pull out, like right there, pull out right there. Let them pass you. There's so many areas you can just slow down, pull out. You, you could slow down and pull out right there, let them pass you. You could slow down, pull out right there, let them pass you. Right here, let them pass you. There's so many spots, but so many people don't. It's like they're trying to like show you, like I'll show you for tailgating me or for wanting to get there fast. It's my world and you're just passing through it. Well, this is Boulder Bay Park, you guys. This is one of the most gorgeous parts of town. I mean, just beautiful. It really is, my goodness. I like it a lot. So now we're coming out of the snowiest part of town heading back and we're gonna drive through the village we might as well right guys we've done this whole valley and also 29 degrees now I told you guys we would be done probably by by noon it's it's gonna be like exactly noon so not too shabby on my guesstimate there <laughs> blah 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 This place is so, I, it's, I, I, I can never say enough how beautiful this place is. I realize how lucky I am to live here, you guys. I really do, and I try not to take it for granted, but I know I do sometimes. Yeah, this is marvelous. Simply marvelous. so much beauty it's overwhelming I don't know if you guys have seen that movie bedazzled with Brendan Fraser but the one character because he plays numerous characters in that movie I feel like the super sensitive guy who like cries at like just a, a pretty sunset and it's, it's just like just so sensitive that's how I feel when it's snowing up here and when we have snow up here, it's super beautiful. Okay, this is a good place to take your kids sledding, you guys. This is the Alpine Slide at Magic Mountain, and they have the Mineshaft roller coaster, which is super fun. But yeah, this is a great spot. And then there's also Big Bear Snow Play. Those are the two that I suggest. I think they're the only two in town. I, I want, I think Snow Summit, has something on the side for like sledding and stuff like that, but don't quote me on it. I know these two are, are the popular ones, especially because then you don't have to deal with the traffic at the ski resorts, but that place that we just passed on the right, the Alpine Slide at Magic Mountain, it gets ridiculously packed. I mean, like ridiculously packed. All right, guys, we are coming up to the village right now or in just a moment. Oh yeah. 
yeah. It's so beautiful here. I love it. I love it. Let's do this. Here we go. We are about to enter the village, folks. It is so pretty in here. One of the places I'd like to stay and put on video is the club here. It's called the club. I've, I've that's one place I've never stayed up here yet. I want to, it's not cheap. So I'm just waiting until I save up enough for that. I think that'll be awesome. And then that, that place I was talking about, um, um, geez, called Queen Bee Honey Shop. They just moved in to this little corner area right here next to Super Bear Arcade where it says Lemuse and stuff like that, that's it right there. I think it's 40729, Queen Bee Honey Shop. As I said, super, super, super nice people that run that, run that place. And uh, it's, it's all locally derived honey. So yeah, they're definitely good people to support up here. Yeah, we're gonna drive through the whole village. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now the whole village is tiny, but still, it's still beautiful. So beautiful. Of course I want you guys to spend money in this town because without you guys none of us get to live here but most of these places in here are so expensive but it's a tourist thing so of course they take as much full advantage as they can I've never liked that just because you're on vacation somewhere like when I would go on cruises, like it was it was just horrible because every single spot where you you could disembark for for most of the day, like everything is like priced double what it usually would would be because of the tourists. It's not right. It's it's really not right. This is one of my favorite places to stay, the Robin Hood Resort. When I used to come up here just to visit, this was the place I would stay all the time. A lot of the rooms have jacuzzis in it. Um, and it's just a, a super cool staff, really cool staff, really nice people. I enjoy it very much. As a matter of fact, when I got in my car accident, my first car accident ever in my other Subaru a couple months ago, um, the person I crashed into works there. <laughs> on this road which is good so for those of you this is the main drag and it feels completely awesome I don't see really any problems 
if you don't have the right vehicle, some of these spots might get you. But I think most of you will, will be fine. It's just getting up here. I heard driving up, when you're on the other side of the mountain range trying to get here, it's pretty nasty. They got a lot more snow apparently than we did all the way up here. truck coming up on us right now. So we're almost to Moon Ridge. We are coming up to Summit Boulevard, which is where Snow Summit Ski Resort is. As I said, we are gonna turn right on Summit to take Brownie Lane behind the rest of Big Bear Boulevard to get home. It, it's only a couple city blocks, so it's not a big deal. So straight ahead, Snow Summit, guys. Gosh, it looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. This guy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Having a good time while he's working. You gotta love that. You gotta love that. Well, believe it or not, a lot of those parking guys from my experiences are not happy campers out there and are constantly yelling at all the drivers. So all these people are walking from the satellite parking lot for Snow Summit. It's this, uh, one of the extra parking lots that they have. Right here. This is the parking lot on Brownie Lane, you guys. Wow, it's during the week. I didn't expect there to be so many people up here. So yeah, skiing's gonna be a nightmare up there, you guys. Good luck getting a bunch of runs in. So there's been talk of, in between Bear Mountain and Snow Summit, of turning that into a bunch more runs, which would be amazing. That would open up the mountain so much more and there'd be so much more space to accommodate all the people that come up here. It would be amazing. Anyway, you guys, it's December 13th, 2022. I love you guys very much. Thank you for taking the ride with me. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will talk to you later. If you have any questions about anything, don't ever hesitate. I'm here. I feel blessed and I feel loved. And I love you guys. You guys take care, okay?